We all know Ben Johnson is coming back, but I think there's just more to this story. Uh, it's been reported that the Lions gave Ben Johnson a large raise to return. Now, we can just kind of put two and two together, right? Ben Johnson, who knows his full story of maybe he didn't like the teams that he was looking at. But in any case, the Lions, we know what they did. They said, hey, we'll make it worth it to come back here. We want you to come back here. And this is just a little thing. Uh, that they were able to give him some more money. I mean, you know, what else can you really offer? But you make the effort to give him more money and give us a chance to get him. And how many times in the past was it just a weird breakup? It just felt weird. I mean, where Barry Sanders, of course, the big one, like, okay, he's gone. Kelvin, uh, you go higher. I mean, there's so many different things that in the past, Lions ownership felt like from the outside, all I can do is, is look at from our perspective as fans looks like the Lions ownership messed that up. I mean, that's what it looks like. So that's, that's all you can go by. I mean, you look at, look, let's look at this story real quick. Then I'll give you more examples of how bad we've messed up. So it looks like he, you know, Ben Johnson, was the top guy for Carolina there for a minute. So it's like, I thought maybe he was gone to Carolina, but instead comes back lions, ownership, leadership steps up. You got guys like Chris Spielman helping Sheila. We got to, we got to at least make the effort to keep him. And look at that. He ends up staying. I mean, because you look at some of those past moves, we'll start with just how ownership let there's so many things you could talk about, but ownership back with William Clay Ford, they didn't, he was never present, never talked. He didn't know what he was thinking, what he was doing. I mean, you don't need to be in front of the cameras all the time or interviews all the time, but man, are you, are you even paying attention to the team? That was the perspective. That was the perception back then. Then you hire Matt Millen and you allow Matt Millen to stay in the job for nine years. Remember he, he hires Marty Morningweg. Marty Morningweg went five and 27. We're like, okay, let's get Steve Mariucci in. That's when we were going to go Joey Harrington, all kinds of wide receivers. Terrible. That doesn't work. We fire him, get Dick Duran in, taking you back here for just an interim. He goes one and four. That's fine. Then Rod Marinelli, of course, comes in. He coaches in 48 games. He only wins 10. We let him stick around for three years. You lose Barry Sanders, just off he goes. You don't even, an all-time legend just kind of walks out the door. Kelvin Johnson decides to just walk out the door. You you not only let him walk out, but you say, hey, we actually need you to pay us back a million dollars. Okay. And then you don't ever repay that. We need to, that's our last kind of, man, can you imagine Sheila repays Kelvin Johnson his thousand or his million they then bring him back for, you know, make it, make a whole uh, embrace the alumni, embrace the alumni greats of the Detroit lions. And that's a great way to do that. So this just shows me the ownership is trying to get it. They're at least trying. And so you bring in Brad Holmes home run hire. Hello. Like compare him to Matt Millen, right? I mean, not even, not even in the same ballpark. You get this Dan Campbell guy who acts like this meathead coach. Actually, he's a motivator. He's smart. He's innovative. He can develop players. Him and Brad Holmes didn't even know each other. I remember when that happened, I thought, that's I don't like that. Shouldn't the GM hire the coach? Nope. Sheila and her advisory team, Chris Spielman, different guys like the Barry Sanders is even kind of part of it. Bring a great hire and now look at what we're seeing we're seeing that really play out in a great way then he's identifies this couple great coordinators both coordinators are getting interviewed and your one coordinator is so good that you try whatever you can to bring him back you don't want to hold him back from a head coaching job you say we'll make it worth it if you come back he comes back you've developed this entire culture you go nine and eight you're ahead of schedule on the rebuild. Even uh, Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes said year three was what we were targeting um, for playoff, for a run, for it all. Okay, it's all set up. They've proven they're doing it. So it it's as Lions fans, we're excited about the nine and eight season, beating Aaron Rodgers twice 
going five and one in the division, winning nine to 10 or whatever we want there at the end. But we're most excited that we have something that's just going to continue to build, continue to grow, not going to just tank. I mean, you know, how about that? You know, we're, we're going, we've got, uh, we've got, what's his name? I can't even think of his name, but then we hire, uh, <laughs> then we hire Matt Patricia and it's, it's just tear down. It's tear down. How many times do we tear it down, tear it down. Matt Patricia comes in, he wants to tear it down. And you're just like J- Jim Caldwell. Jeez. Thank you. Jim Caldwell gets us going. We're, I mean, we're kind of going tear it down. So then this tear down was like, man, I don't know if I can do this. And then when we go one and six, it's thinking, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I can, I don't think I can do this again. This hire a new regime, tear it down, try it their way. We we finally have it. I think we finally have it. So from all the blunders from 25, 30 years ago, all the way until present time, it's so fun to watch your team, knowing you have a chance, knowing you've, you're going to be coached well. You're not going to take the wind in overtime. You, you, some of these classic blunders where you're just not good. So all it takes is one bad call by the ref or one mistake by your team, and and you're out of the game. That's what happens so many times over the years where it's like Lions are getting screwed. It's like, well, yeah, there is that, but also we're not good. And so all it takes is one bad call or one bad play by our team, and we're out of the game. So it's like, oh, classic Lions. Yeah, classic Lions was just we weren't good. We w- didn't have the depth. We didn't have the players. We didn't have the culture. We didn't have all the things that we have now. So it's so great to see ownership. What if Sheila gets it? And it's like, well, I, all I can look at is what she's done this last three, four months, or excuse me, last couple of years. And I see her great hire the, with a GM, a great coach, coordinators, developing. Everything's coming together. So that is what is so exciting to see. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is it refreshing to see ownership finally getting something and getting something and going somewhere with it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. This is uh, this is big for this is big for everybody. But the Lions, I I've never seen it in my lifetime. If you're older than me, let me know if there's ever a time before this where you're like, yeah, I, I you know I remember in the '80s we we were really turning the corner of the. 60s i don't know i have never seen this so it's great to great to see it so let me know your thoughts in the comments to see the lions really improving ownership getting it the whole thing coming together for a big off season to really put this all together and uh, we will see all of you on the next one